I'm going to start off by making a tuple, and I'll sign it to A. It'll say within it range 1, 5. I hit enter, and I key in A, and I get range 1, 5. Well, that's pretty simple enough. Well, I want to do that again, but this time I want to add something else onto it. I want to key in a comma, and then A, B, C, D, E. That's nice. A nice string. Let's see what happens when I do that. Now I key in A, and I get A, B, C, D, E, and range 1, 5. Okay. But now I want to get fancy, and I want to tell the system I want to only see the first 0, 1, and 2 characters of this, the first three characters. All right. How am I going to do that? Let me copy this and put that here. And I'm going to put in square brackets, colon, three square brackets, like that. And I think that's it. That looks good. I'm going to hit enter. And let's see what A gives us now. Whoa, that was pretty good. So I've got this thing and this thing, which was smart enough to just grab the first three characters and put it all within one tuple. I'm assign that to A. Well, that's pretty good. But what if I wanted this and this to be separate in different variables? Well, we take advantage of something called tuple unpacking. I'm going to key this in again. But this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, assign that to A, comma, B. Now the system will turn around and say, look, i got two parts, an A part and a B part. I'll assign that respectively to A and B over here. Well, let's cross our fingers and see if this works. Can A be range 1 through 5? B? And oh my goodness, I get A, B, C. What do you know? And uh, what is that called again? That's called tuple unpacking. Huh. Well, that's pretty amazing, I think. Well, what if I change this now? What if I change this so that it says, not A, B, C, D, E, but it says uh, January, February, March, April, and May. All right, we can do that. A will be the same. And except for the different letters, I'll get the uh, letters of the first three months, January, February, and March. Now I have an exceptional student in the uh, 100 on each one of the, the supremely difficult exams that I offered. One in January, one in February, one in March. Ah, I would uh, like to make a list of that. How would I go about doing that? In other words, I want to see J100, F100, and M100. Like that. Well, how would I go about doing that? Let's try it this way. For each x that's in uh, b, this is what I'd like to see. I'd like to see, I'll notice I'm using curlies here, so this is going to be like a dictionary. I want to see x, the letter, j, f, or m, and a colon, followed by 100, because you got 100 on each one of the exams. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to hit enter now. Oh, and there we go. March, you got 100. January, you got 100. And February, you got 100. Wow. Wow, that was good. But let me do that one more time. But this time, I'm going to assign this to a letter. I'll call it G for grades. Mm, grades. Uh, I got uh, these grades. And uh, I want to keep track of it. So what's in G? These guys. So my dictionary, my G dictionary, has these values in it. So Mr. Grade's book, what was um, Mr. Grade's book? What was the value associated with J? January. Oh, that's a string data, character data. I got to put that in a single quote. And what was the value associated with January? One hundred. What do you know? What was the value associated with 
March. Dollars to donors, I got a hundred again. I do. We're good. But then in my other class, no one's taken the test yet. So for those first three months, I'd like to see not taken next to each particular exam letter. So for each X in the B, which has JFM in it, I want to see NT for not taken. Now let's key that in. Whoops, I keyed in capital G. Lark is G, and there they are. March, not taken. January, not taken. February, not taken. Wow. Okay, that's all I want to talk about for now. This is George Ball. I hope it was helpful. Please rate the video by clicking on the like button. I'd appreciate that. And um, good luck.